Well, whether you talk about the Turkish delight, whether you talk about homegrown talent, it doesn't really matter. What I know is that he's one of the greatest players who have ever played here in South Africa. And when he hit his 30s, people kept asking, you know, when are you going to ever go play overseas? He didn't waste any time. Boarded a plane, went to Turkey. I don't know if he's retired. He hasn't told anybody if he's retired or not. Maybe we might, scratch of the nose, get an answer from him. It's Piva Shabala, good to see you. Good to see you. Have you retired? No. Not yet. Not at all? No. What are you waiting for? Um, I'm waiting for the right moment, mm -hmm. yeah, but at this present moment, I'm still very much in it. Okay, two things there. You're waiting for the moment, you're waiting for the moment to play, not the moment to retire. Both. No. I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to play first, uh -huh. then retire after. But what's hence, more hence important say both. for you, to play or to retire? To play. Where? Anywhere I want to. You coming back home? You are home, but do you want to play home again? I'm, I'm, I'm back home now, but um, I won't say much as, as to where's the next destination, mm. but I am going to play. There's two options. And you know, you and I have always been honest with each other. You go to Or Tambo International, you either go to domestic or you go to international. Where would you be going to? There's still a great opportunity to, to go to Or mm -hmm. International Departures. But where you were supposed to go has got coronavirus and you can't go. <laughs> How did you know? I know. I know. I know. Somebody phoned me from that part of the world. Actually, just before I got into... The, the our conversation and they were yeah. disappointed because they were looking forward to it you would have been disappointed too yeah i was actually disappointed but um you know i had to make peace with it um it was something that was um beyond my control and also you know look at other options as, as well because it happened and one cannot dwell on it but to find other alternatives but what's keeping you going? What is that one thing? We see a Ronaldo, he goes to Juventus when everyone's saying go to an old age home or go to China because everyone sees China as that place where the retired people want to make their last bit of money. But what, what keeps you going on to say you can still make it somewhere in Europe, somewhere around the world? The desire, you know, um, I still have the hunger and I, I still have that child in me, you know, um, the child that fell in love with uh, the beautiful game at an early age. I still have that and um, I'm still positive that I'll still make it at this age anywhere that I want to, you know, if an opportunity presents itself, then I'll do it. And I mean, I still get calls, texts, yeah. you know, um, inquiries and people asking me, what's the situation? Can we invite you? Can you come over? So that, that says a lot, yeah. you know, that they still see the talent, they, they still see value in me. That value, and I was calculating earlier, you haven't played a game since May. Since May, yeah. Since May 2019, that's almost a year now. <laughs> yeah. Without a professional game of football, is, is that the longest ever? I mean, injuries and everything in your career that you've not been able to play? Yeah, it has been the longest in my career. Yeah. And um, to be quite honest with you, I, I suffered a huge setback. And you'll be the first to know. Mm. You know after after um, end of the season, you know, I came back and I got a call from, from Turkey that they, you know, still want me back. And um, I went back, I trained uh, for about a week and 
um, it just did not work out. Mm -hmm. And then I came back home, you know, I started training on my own and I had this niggling, you know, injury, but I took it lightly, you know. And then that opportunity you're talking about, right. you know, came and as I was about to, to leave, you know, I, I found out that, you know, that niggling injury was actually serious. So I had to go and, and uh, you know, take care of it. Operate. And it, yes, and it, it took me out for, for a long time. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, I kind of knew you were in hospital. I knew you were in for an operation. You know, there's some things you have to respect mm -hmm. and you don't go public <laughs> with. And True. that was one of them. Yeah. How are you now? Have you recovered? I'm, I'm good now. I'm, I'm in a good space. I've recovered. I'm 100% fit. And yeah, I'm happy again. So now when you talk about Turkey called you to say come back, was that to Azarum Spor? I don't even know how to pronounce that name. It's... Yes. Yeah. Um, my situation with them was, um, you know, I signed a three-year contract. It was two years um, plus one year option to renew. And when you got relegated, I still had, you know, to go back and honor my contract. Right. You know, but we... We had to renegotiate because we're now in the lower division, you know, but um, I did not simply agree mm -hmm. to, to what they were offering me and it, it just didn't make um, business sense. Well, they're offering you, know. you lower? Yes, lower I, fee than I, what I had to go, you know, um, lower, of which I, I understood then, you know, the sure. situation. But there were other challenges as well that, you know, I, I had to sit down and, and um, you know, relook everything and look at my situation as well. You know that um, I'm I'm not getting any younger. Um, I'm in a foreign country. I'm you know far away from home. I left my family, so my stay should you know with uh, my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in coming to think about all of that, so you said no to them. Now you're a free agent. Yes, I'm a free agent. Now. You're a free agent. So you can join any team you want. Yeah, today. You could join tomorrow. Bring a contract. You could be in the derby on the weekend. Yeah, easy. Because you've been training, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you could be that surprise for Orlando Pirates. They could launch you because you don't have to go back to Kaiser Chiefs. That's how free you are. Yeah, I'm free. I can join any team. And that's almost 10 or 8 games to go for each of the teams of the PSL. But do you desire to come back to the PSL at all? My wish is to, you know, play my final game um, in the PSL. I want to end my career in the PSL. Which team? If I do go, I'll come back and, yeah. yeah. Which team do you want to end it off with? Um, Chiefs has been my home, you know, and I've, I've had so many um, great memories, more highs than lows, yeah. you know, I've achieved a lot. And like I said before, that I'll, I'll still want to go back, you know, and end and, and my career there. Mm -hmm. And the manner uh, in which I left the club, you know, my heart was full, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't make enemies. So hence I say that it'll always be my home. So whether I go back there as a player or, or oh. I cut grass or well, you the can't blood cheese will still, will always, you know, uh, be my, my, my home. No, let's respect people that cut grass. You can't cut grass. You're not talented enough to cut grass. But, but you can me. do something on the field, like coaching. I don't know if that is something that you'd want to do, but we're going to come back to that okay. in a second. I want to wrap up the conversation around Turkey and just find out about your experience. Because here you were away for 11 months. Here you were making 19 appearances in Turkey. Sure, goals were hard to come by because of how you were playing, coming off the bench, um, but you were able to play the game of your life. The last game, the last game that although you won 2 0, was still not enough to see you survive. Mm -hmm. You provided an assist in that game. But how was your overall experience being that player that finally got that break to go play overseas? Yeah, it was it was a you know a dream come true, and it was that you know um, 
once in a lifetime opportunity for one to um, write, you know, um, a new chapter, right. you know. And I did that. I'm grateful that um, I got that opportunity, you know. Yes, those those blessings, you know, they, they came with um, greater challenges, you know, things that I did not anticipate then. Like what? But I'm, I'm not complaining. What were the challenges you know? when you got there? Um, I won't, I won't dwell much on, on, on the weather and sure. the language. I think from, from you know, playing point of view, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it was different, you know, the way they do things, mm -hmm. um, the way they plan, you know, um, it was so different to, to, the, to the way that I'm, I'm used to. Give us an know. idea, though, because when you um, say different, you know, it's, it's almost like, they, do they play bamjai football? What, what is it that they do that is different that you found to be quite strange? For instance, when, when you know, when you prepare for your game, mm -hmm. um, it starts a training. You know, there's, there's a, um, a, technical, a, a, a technical session, you know, that prepares you to, to, uh, to your opponents. Mm -hmm. You, you need to know your opponents. So that side is, is, is different. You know, you, you don't sit down and, and have a meeting and analyze opponents. Um, sometimes they'll just send you um, a clip on, on WhatsApp, on your WhatsApp, and then you check. If you check, it, it's your business. If you don't check, it's still your business. It's oh. up to you. No one will come and ask you that, did you check uh, who's your opponent? and What's the strength of your team? Mm. You know, things like practicing set plays, um, the structure of the team. So I was I was shocked when I when I got there, mm. the way we were training. Like, okay, it's Thursday. We are playing on Saturday, not tactical session. Friday, premier training, not set no set plays, nothing. Okay, who's starting? We don't know. And then uh, match day. And then voila, so and so are starting. Oh. That's it. So sometimes, sometimes um, players would give twenty percent or thirty percent, mm. um, you know, a training, and then they would get an opportunity to play. Mm. And that was something that I was not used to, you know. And I would I would give hundred percent, and still not play, or and still be on the bench. And those, those were the challenges that I had. And it was very difficult for me, mm. you know, uh, frustrating because um, I was never used to that situation, mm. you know. But I, I kept working hard. I, re I remember I used to train. When we were training twice a day, I would train thrice a day. Once, twice. Off, then I'll, I'll, I'll go and have yeah. my, my own... Um, Session. session. Yeah. So I made peace with the fact that um, the situation is beyond my control. I cannot change that, you know, but if I do get an opportunity, I'll, I'll make use of it. That is weird. Because weird. <laughs> you would know as a professional that has been there, that training is your ticket to getting yes. a, a first team start. And if you don't apply yourself at training, then the coaches aren't going to look at you. Now, if guys are applying themselves at 20% at training, but still warrant a position ahead of you, then what warrants a player to start a game? If you haven't looked at your WhatsApp to see your opponent, then who knows whether the blue tick has gone off or not. It yeah. doesn't make sense. You know, so for you, what, what do you think... What, what do you think was behind that? And... I mean, given your welcome, how people welcomed you at the airport, it was a big deal, you know. Spiwe Shabalala was coming through. You made headlines. People were happy to see you. And now when you come back and you're getting a sense that things aren't as professional, it's like find a find that you like us Yeah, I mean, I mean the, you know, the, the welcome and, and the love from the fans was, was yeah. humbling, you know. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was it was difficult. I mean, um, I remember at one time one um, the coach um, he called me. I think it was the first coach. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, you 
you've got the talent, you one of the most skillful players in the mm -hmm. team, but you're not aggressive. I want you to be aggressive. In this league, you know, uh, people are very aggressive, mm -hmm. so you must be strong, you know, and that's not me. My strength is to play, you know. My, my strength is to make the team play, sure. you know. My strength is to, you know, find players in good goal-scoring opportunities and assist. And I wasn't willing to change that now and fight and tackle and that was not me. So when, when you, you say strong, did he also expect you to now I may, go I may to the gym and lift physique, the weights? And, maybe yeah. and go on 50-50 fight and, and tackle, yeah. Right? And then the second one, the second coach came in. We had a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. He almost said the same, you know, um, same uh, sentiments. And then he said, I'm, I'm not going to rush you. Mm. I'll just, you know, introduce you gradually. And when I feel that you're ready, I'll give you a chance. I was like, okay. And then he did that. Okay. Um, last 10 minutes, I'd go in, have good touches, you know, Next game, maybe 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I got a big break again. One of, one of our key players was, was injured. And then, um, then I was in the team. Wow. Then I gave a um, um, world-class performance. Mm -hmm. I think I was man of the match. match yeah, I remember yeah. that game, yeah. And then after that, I get, we won the game. Yeah. And then after that, I got an injury. Um, I think it was a, a muscle tear on the, on the quad. Mm. So I was out for 10 days. So I had to sit outside again. And after that, things changed. You know, I went back from, from uh, being introduced again, you know, and on, I think on the coach's last game, mm. he was on a Thursday, he called me again, the very same coach. And then he said, oh, we were playing a big game. We were playing Galatasaray at home. And then he said, um, I want to play you on the left because I've been playing um, mostly behind uh, as a 10. Then he said, he said, I've got a challenge uh, on the left. I want you to play um, on the left. I said, OK. Then he said, be ready. OK, then um, I was on the bench. We, we played. I think five, 10 minutes, you know, after mm. um, the second half it's, yeah, started, he called me as he was about to uh, introduce me. Then we got an injury. <laughs> Our captain was um, a defender. Yeah. So now I had to wait again. And then said, stop, stop, okay. Continue warm, uh, warming up. And then they put a defender. So I went on that game, I think last 15 minutes, and it was okay. You know, great feeling to play against one of the big teams. And then after that game, that game he resigned. So oh. the second coach now. Yeah. So, so he just resigned. <laughs> he, they didn't fire him. No, he he, he just resigned. I think he he felt that um, he didn't get enough. Um, mm support from the management because after after the game no one came to the change room from the management they were angry the we, we threw yeah. yeah yeah we threw one all but why would they be angry because you were a team who would have been happy with the draw was that with the team like galatasaray yeah i think when when you get a point against galatasaray yeah. you should be happy i i feel they expected more A couple of things from what you've just said. How does it make you feel as a person who's been normally and usually a starting 11 player? Um, I think the only thing you really knew about a bench is when you're going to get water. I don't think sitting on a bench was mm -hmm. your strong point. So now here you are, you, the, you are their international signing. But then you have been to be introduced and reintroduced and introduced and reintroduced all the time. How, how does it make you start to think now about the move that you had hoped for versus the reality that you're facing? 
Yeah, at first it was difficult, you know, and um, there were times where I would ask myself, but, but what am I doing here? Mm. You know, these guys, they were calling me day and night, you know, uh, speaking to me and Jasmine, mm. wanting me to come here. I'm here now, I'm not playing, then what, what's happening? You know, and I'm, I'm not a person that would ask the coach, coach, why I'm not playing? Why is he playing? Why I'm not playing? I'm, I'm not used to that, you know. And in, in Europe, that's, that's what they do. That's what they, they used to. If you're not in the team, then you, 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 you get angry, mm. you know, you give 5%, they understand that, mm. you know. And then the next, the next game, you back on the starting lineup, you know, and that was not me. I wasn't going to do that. But what kept me going was, you know, irrespective of all the challenges that I, you know, was going through, you know, that, that dream was, was bigger than that. You know, I was always saying to myself, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm, you know, I've ticked that box and I won't let anything, you know, um, overshadow that. Whether it's playing or, or not playing or being overlooked, I'll keep going until the end. But how are your teammates reacting to you? Um, I'm talking about now this is off the field, this is away from the stadium, it's away from the training ground. It is just you maybe more on a social platform. How are they reacting to you? How are they welcoming you in or not welcoming you in? I mean, how was that dynamic? No, they were great. I was, I was getting along with um, my teammates, you know, um, foreign, foreign players and also Turkish players, you know, and they would come and say, oh, what this coach, what is he doing? Yeah. You know, we deserve to play. Even um, um, uh, Oberton, uh, Gabi, Gabi oh, Oberton, yes, yes. Yes. yes, you know, um, he's a fantastic player. Yeah. You know, it come it come to me and say, if I would play with you, you know, we'll kill these teams. You know, because you've got the vision, you've got the skill, you are smart. But they, you know, opt to give those who are not, you know, so good um, technically a chance. And I was like, I don't know. Sure, we'll see. But everyone really loved me. Yeah. Even the fans would come to training just to watch our session. But did you ever think of? phoning your manager, Jasmine, and saying, that return flight ticket, can we activate it for next week? I want to go home. No, no. Never. I, I, didn't, want, I didn't want to, go, to come back home. Um, it, it was, a, it was a, um, you know, an experience, you know, and with, with lots of hardships. Yeah. And I had a one, I had one routine there. Mm. So wake up, take a shower, go to training, have breakfast, mm. rest, train, do extras, mm. uh, take a shower, rest, lunch, back to the apartment. Apartment, I'm all alone. Yeah. So it's either I catch up or I just sleep. Because that's part of what I was going to ask you that, I mean, here you are, this happily married young man who's left a wife at home, left Owami at home, left friends at home, and like you're saying, you go back to the apartment and then you hear the sound of the walls and you're wondering where to next. You're not playing as often as you want. What does that do to you now as Shaba, not the football player, but the family man? Yeah, I missed my family a lot. Mm. But, um, you know, I was always um, in contact with my wife. Mm. And I think that also kept me going, you know. And I also had, you know, that belief that, okay, maybe this game you'll play. Yeah. Don't give up just yet. Keep going, you know. And, and I ended up having fun at training. So when we were training, I'll, I'll just have a ball, juggle or do skills yeah. or do free kicks. And I ended up having about five or six players doing that with me all the time because they enjoyed uh, doing that. So for me now it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. At some point it was difficult. It felt like now it's, it's a job now. Waking up, 
you know, you're feeling, you've got back pains, uh, neck is sore, what's happening? You know, oh, I must go to that place again. Mm -hmm. There was that period where it was very, very difficult. But after that, I was like, let me just embrace this and, and face it and deal with it. And you didn't regret, you didn't regret, you know, the move away from Jeeves, you supplying the balls, because you then had a, a nice combination with, with Ryan Moon. Every time you played, Ryan Moon was scoring, you know, and I don't know how that worked. You left, he's left. Yeah. You know, so he's, it's, you know, he had to go to Stellenbosch. But did you ever regret that move? I didn't. And I, I, I felt that if I had regrets, then I would be, it would be an insult to to the Almighty and the ancestors, you know, and I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I, I tried to focus on, on the positives, you know, than, than the setbacks. The team where Pule Ekstein is at, they were also interested in you. Did you ever have a discussion to say, is it a possibility that you'd go and play for them? Yeah, there was interest, but um, nothing happened. And there was also interest from, um, uh, a possibility of a loan right. to League One club, in, also in Turkey, and uh, they are now currently playing in the Super League. Oh wow! You know, but the team refused. Problem? They they don't want to let you go. Yeah, because they're still contracted at the time. Yeah, but wow. there was, it was an option of a loan for yes. six months. You know, but they they refused. The coach said, "Um, I mean, his plans." <laughs> but the plans were not to be seen, so they're in his plans, in his head, but not on yeah. the field. But that's it's, crazy. It's just, it's just difficult there, you yeah. know, the way they do things, from, from ad administration to, to coaching. It's, it's so different. Mm. It's so different where, you know, one would ask himself, but what's happening here? Yeah. You know, do I have to be friends with Robert so that I can play or what? Or uh, do I have to be a relative to so and so, so that I can get an opportunity. So it was, it was just, yeah, it was just weird. So with all of those conflicts that were happening at the time, and you not being able to play, you, you don't think twice to say, guys, maybe let's look at the contract again. Maybe you need that breakaway. Maybe you need to go play for a different team with a different philosophy that appreciates your training, that appreciates you playing, and actually appreciates why the hell they went and mm -hmm. got you from Kaiser Chiefs in the first place. True. I mean, surely those things should matter. You, you, they can't go to that extent to get you there, only to frustrate you on the bench. doesn't make sense. It didn't. It didn't at all. I mean, we had, there was a time where we had a meeting with only foreign players. Mm -hmm with a um, technical director. So he was asking us what's the problem, why the team is not doing well. And he asked me, why are you not playing? And I told him, I don't know. I think you should ask the coach why I'm not playing. Because you're there every time in training and you, you, you see what's happening in training. I mean, you've got cameras there. You know, after, after training, you, you can um, get those clips. You know, it, it's evident that I'm doing well. I deserve to play, but I, I don't know why I'm not playing. And then he said to me, you must go and ask the coach. Tell him to play. And I said, it's, it's not in my nature to, to ask the coach, coach, play me. Why am I not playing? But that's clearly, the answer. Though. Clearly he knows why I'm not playing. But that is the answer. Yeah. He, he was giving you the formula of how they do things there, that you need to go tell the coach that, hi, coach, I play football for your team. Please play me so I can show you that I can deliver. He was telling I'm, you I'm, what to do. I'm, I'm used to, you know, doing the talking on the field. Sure. Give me the ball, I'll do the talking. But it wasn't working. You know. Yes, the it was. It, it wasn't working, did it not tempt you to say, maybe let me try things the Turkish way? Do as the Romans do when you go to Rome. Don't, did it not tempt you? It, it, it did at some point, but I just, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Not to say I was afraid or there was, there was pride, no. 
I, I just felt that, you know what, I'll, I'll continue working hard and we'll see what happens. Let me do a quick flip-flop. 11th of June, 2010. What does that date signify for you? Oh, the, the, the big day, the big day. Uh, it's, it's, it, I think this year marks the 10 year anniversary of, of um, the World Cup that we, we held here at home, sorry. It wasn't just the World so Cup. So it's just, yo, it's memories. <laughs> it's, it's history in a nutshell. But it's history for the country. But most importantly, for the, for the human being that's sitting on this couch, on Marahoe TV, on Thursday Night Live, it was history for you. That's the most important thing. Because I can't, I can't interview the whole country right now to, uh, to ask them and tell me their feelings. I can ask you. Because we were carrying drinks and we were sitting in the, in, in the studio set up there with John Bonds. John Bonds had blisters because we had to park the car somewhere mm. on the road. The traffic was too much. We had to go on air. We couldn't make it on time. So there's John in his big foot there, he's tied up, his blisters, everything. And there's this goal that comes out of nowhere. And we lose it to hell with how we looked. We spilled stuff over our suits. I can imagine what it was like for you. You were the man that made us go crazy that day. Yeah, I, you know that you, it, 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 it only sunk in the next day, that, you know, what I just did. Yeah. But prior to that, you know, I, I, I remember when um, it was announced that we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll be the host. I remember telling my friend that, Kito Lalada, go El Cup. I'm going to play there. And 2009, um, I was not at my best, yeah. but I was, I was still in the, in, the, in the team, national team. And... Um, I think late 2009, we played um, Japan, yeah. PE, yeah. friendly game. And Japan were all over us. And we had only one uh, uh, shot at goal on target, and it came from me. But, you know, uh, post-match uh, remarks from coach uh, Carlos Pereira, he criticized me publicly mm -hmm. that I must pull up my socks. You know, it, it really hit me, and I didn't take it personally, even though it hit me. Uh, for me, it was a, it was a message. You know, I took it as an information that work hard. If you don't work hard, someone else will come in and take your place. You know, and fast forward 2010 in January, um, the camp we had in Brazil, that was the turning point. You know, I had um, a heart to heart with Coach Pizzo. He was very harsh, and after that chat, you know, I, I went to my room, and as sad as I was, I analyzed everything. You know, I realized that he was right. It's, it's high time that I must work, you know. What are some of the things that he told you? Because I can imagine, now, you on the back, remember, chronologically, you were out of your 2008, 2009 season at Chiefs, where you wiped everything. At yeah. the awards. We'll get to that later. But you did well. You took everything. Player of the year, players player of the year. You won the best goal. You won the whatever. Best dressed. Best dressed. <laughs> You're the coolest dude. What is that award? <laughs> coolest dude. You're the coolest dude. They were voting for you and all sorts of yeah. other people. But you were the coolest dude. You beat Casta. You beat everybody. They're not cool. You were cool. Oh, yes. Yeah. The kids. The kids award. Yeah. So 2008, 2009, you were, you were ripping it. You know, you were doing well online. There were website uh, votes that were coming through. Yeah. Everything was happening for you. So when you go to Brazil and you're sitting with Coach Pizzo, this is now after the Japan game, after Coach Carlos yes. Alberto Pereira has told the whole country that he's not happy with you. What does Pizzo say to you that makes you think, hmm, okay? Oh, he, he was blunt and he... He told me that I need to pull up my socks. You know, my work rate is not good. And I must also be involved, you know, without the ball. I must think only show up when you have, to, you know, when you're in position of the ball. And I must get in the box. I must score goals as well. You know, and 
he even make reference to um, Dane Clayton and um, uh, Franklin Cake. Okay, yeah. Said these are two best, you know, um, left wingers, and they're scoring goals. They're working hard without the ball. So you must do the same. If you want to play, do the same. Hmm. Or else, Uto Sala. It was January. And you're sounding like him <laughs> now. Please carry on. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, from, I think from the... Oh, we had six friendly games yeah. in, 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 in Brazil, including the, uh, the international friendly against Paraguay. Mm. Out of all those six friendly games, I scored in almost all of them. Yeah, it's only one game that I did not score. But the rest I scored, and I scored six goals in total. So from there, I never looked back, you know. But um, it just stuck here and here, what he said to me. And from there, it was hard work all the way. Because you took it upon yourself to change yourself, but also to become a better professional. True. Professional player who was willing to be and hoping to be and wanting to be. Because if you could tell your friend back, what, two years before the World Cup that you're going to be there. And now you are there. You are in the starting lineup right there next to you. There's Mexico. <laughs> There's a packed stadium. No other African country has ever hosted this showpiece. Except Latin. He was hey, never hey, you. <laughs> I'm freaked to suit. South Africa. South Africa. Yeah. Yes. South Africa was hosting. But we were, Shaba, you cannot tell me that your toes were twingling and your kneecaps were twisting and your nerves were there. It was an unbelievable moment that. Where, where does one get the guts, the inspiration? I don't know. I've never heard you in any interview maybe say this, but at what point? Do you decide that, yes, I can pass, yes, I can run, yes, I can do so many things, but right now I'm going to shoot and I'm going to go for goal? Mm -hmm. At what point? I think, I think it, 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 it just comes out you know, naturally, yeah. especially when you, when you have the football brains. You know, you know when is the right time to release the ball, when is the right time to pass, when is the right time to take a shot. Mm -hmm. In that moment, when as soon as I controlled the ball, I I knew that the keeper was off his line, you know, and I wanted to lop it over, but in a split second, I I changed my mind and I just took a powerful shot, you know, and as it left my my you know my foot, I knew that I connected, and I saw it you know hitting the top corner and the noise. <laughs> The running, the celebration, and the jiving, the dancing, la paya. You had rehearsed enough. Now it was the we time did. to. Yeah, we, you we did. did. You, you, you we guys did. rehearsed now, the now dance. And them, yeah. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who was the choreographer? <laughs> yeah. 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 So you were the somizi of the situation. Then. Yeah. Okay. So they did it perfectly how they executed we the dance. They did it routine. perfectly. Exceptionally well. Wow. But it started a training. So it, 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 it also shows you the belief that we had. We knew that, you know, that opportunity would come. That's crazy. But little did you know that that goal that got everybody crazy would then enter the FIFA history books. That you would mm -hmm. be one of three goals worldwide that would be entered for the Pushka Award. I mean, we had heard of Pushka, we know his history, we know what it's about, but the Mando Pushka law was now bring, bringing <laughs> closer to us, was yeah. being brought closer to us. How, how did that, how was that reaction for me? Because now you know that when the Ballon d'Or, as it was, because then FIFA was still in charge of the Ballon d'Or Award, uh, so it was all under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. So in that one evening, no matter what happens, whether you win it or you lose it, you would have to, number one, be there in mm. Zurich. Number two, the whole world, again, would have to relive that moment. How was that for you? You know, when I was told about it, um, um, you know, it, it didn't hit home. I, I thought that it was just one of those, you know, um, events. Yeah. 
you know, I only realized when I arrived um, at the airport, you know, um, uh, my, my chauffeur was waiting for me, all oh, dressed up, black my and white, white, my white, my white. chauffeur. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we, yeah, and we're driving in this big S-class. And it was just myself at the back. Yeah. Everything was there. And then he said to me, no, uh, Mr. Shabalala, my name is Stefan. Yeah, Stefan. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of you. Anything that you want, I'll take care of you. OK, then we drove to the hotel, got the five-star hotel, hmm. everything. And then let me tell you what happened. <laughs> when we got there, so I had, um, I was unpacking my clothes then. Mm. So I just decided, no, let me, let me um, fit my suit and check if all is in order. Yeah. <laughs> when I did the fittings, I realized I took the wrong suit. Oh, no. Like the wrong, it's not even my size. Hey, man. So wrong there I was, suit. yeah. There I was panicking now. Okay, I need to go to the shops now. And then I, I, I phoned Jasmine and I told him. <laughs> Then I called the driver because he was downstairs yeah. and we, 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 we drove, we went to the mall and I, I got a perfect suit, like it was perfect tailored suit. Oh wow. Perfect fit. Size, yonking. Everything, or, perfect. Jenks are the colorful socks, Zarko, everything. So oh, nah. socks and white white. Tops. <laughs> and then when I arrived there, um, Yes, upon arrival, yeah. I was actually on the call with you. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing so, crossing the radio. Yes. Yeah. And then when they opened the door, it was noise and, and, and red carpet. screams, red carpet, and you know, the lights, camera action thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. So there was your, your Schneiders and um, your Micon, your Lucio's and them. Just signing so. autographs. So as I was, I wanted to pass quickly because, yeah, yeah. you know, in, in my mind, I thought, ah, they don't know me. Yeah, yeah. Then I had now, Shabalala, Shabalala, please come, okay. And Who's I went there. So as I was signing, already they had pictures of me. Oh. You know those small pictures? Yeah, yeah, yeah the little cards. Yeah, yeah, the cards and, okay. So I was signing now with the world's best. I was hmm. like, okay, now that I'm here, then, might as well. I might as well do it with pride. Then I did it. <laughs> and because you deserved it, you know, you know when, when things align, and, and maybe the context, again, when you go to Zurich <clears throat> for these Bollendor Awards, you, you're literally flying and you're arriving on the day. So you're arriving in the morning, but yes, late in the evening, evening is yes, the true. event. So I'm trying to put the context so people understand that if you realize that you've got the wrong suit on, you don't have much time. So you're arriving on the day in the morning. In the morning. And then the whole world yeah. is going to have to see you. you know? So that was an important thing. But why I say it's aligned, when you look back on that day, on that match day, it is the first World Cup on African soil. You're getting your 50th cap. 50th, yes. And you're scoring in the 55th minute. 55th, yeah. So just five minutes away from your 50, you know, so they, they just... The fives there. The fives yeah. are there and, they, and, and everything is making sense. And again, you having been the very first player to play for your national team, having played in the national first division, the NFD, as it was then. No other player had been able to do that. So you had set the history. So all I'm saying is that it was bound to happen. If they were able to spot your talent while you're playing at NFD, you play for Bafana Bafana, you scored the only goal, the first goal of a World Cup. 50th cap, 55th minute, all of those things. Vid, I am at Lose, I am cool. Ah, Ibu says so straight. I am cool, man, I am at Lose. Yeah. What more do you want? Then, because life happens, Mr. Shabalal, mm. and I said to you, 2010 was such a heavy, hot and cold light and heavy, and then 5th of December happens. Mm. Your rock, your most powerful human being ever, Umam Ripak, mm. leaves this world. 
your mother, that one person that you had always sought that solitude with, spoken very humbly. She was very proud of you. Mm. I remember. I know that. Now, having come through these highs that we're talking about, and then festive season almost there. It's the start of December. You lose your mother. How are you, how are you finding yourself in that space? I think on, on, on she was um, hospitalized on the 27th of, of, of November. Yeah. Yeah, let me, let me just quickly go back before the 20, 27th. Yeah. On the first, you know, there was, there was a break-in at my house. First of? We were robbed November. Of November, okay. Yeah, at gunpoint, and they took cell phones, money, and, and, and you know, when she came, she was, she was crying. Yeah. She was crying, shaking, and she said, you know what, as long as you're okay, mm -hmm. um, I'm happy. And then, because after that, I told myself that, you know what, I'm going to buy a house now in an estate because it's, it's safe. Yeah. And I, three days later, I went to view a house in an estate. Mm. And then two days after, you know, I drove home. Um, I took her and I showed her the house. She, she loved the house and then she was happy. Mm. Then I told her, you know what, this, it's a process going to take three months, you know, for me to move in. Yeah. But I don't have three months. I'd rather rent and then, you know, um, eventually buy. Yeah. yeah. Then it was okay. And then 27th, she was in hospital. And then on the, on the 3rd of, of December, mm -hmm. I was in camp. Um, I asked the coach then, Vivi, you know, to to drive and join the family um, in hospital for a prayer. And it was also the award ceremony. Uh, the sports awards? Yeah, SA, SA sports, sports awards. Sports awards, yeah. And then I went, we had a prayer session, and, and I whispered in the ear that tomorrow we are playing against Pirates, uh, Telecom Cup. We're going to win the Telcom Cup. I'm going to score and I dedicate that to you. I'll come back on Sunday and bring you the medal. Mm. Then I went back to the hotel and then later, um, then I, um, I was told that I won the um, South African uh, Football of the Year, you know, and Saturday, Paris game, and I remember I had a T-shirt uh, inside, um, written, get well soon, mom, yeah. uh, Shaba loves you. And I scored the goal. Mm. We won 3-0. The next day, I went to the hospital in the morning, you know, and I left um, the gold medal, as promised. Yes. Then I, I went, I left, I went to my house. Mm. And then I got a call around 12.30. Mm. Then I could feel that you know, something's not right here. Because my aunt just called me and said, mm. uh, please come back, we want to see you. So it was, it was a, a, a lonely you know, drive from mm. Ramsar to Protiklen. Mm. And as I parked outside, and I could feel that the energy is not good. You know, and when I went inside, that's, that's when they told me, mm. yeah that she, she has passed on. Sure. So it was, yeah, it was, it was difficult, you know, it was, it felt like, you know what, um, it's just the end of me, mm -hmm. you know, cause we, we are very close, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, I was raised by both parents mm -hmm. and, you know, they gave me the most three things that a child could ask for, you know, they gave me their love, um, time mm. and support you know they did not only come to watch me play in the World Cup mm. you know they came when I was playing for Piri Arsenal under 12 a Piri Lapa but they would come mm. and watch you know even on their wedding day I had to leave their wedding and go to Orlando Stadium play cup final score win go back to the wedding 
So it was, it was, it was a difficult period for me and, and, and my family. Oh. And, but you would have felt proud though that those words you would have, you would have whispered to her ear about the win, about the medal, about mm. the scoring, you were able to fulfill and still go back to the hospital, give her the medal, although in the next couple of hours, she would then soon depart. You would have been proud of having fulfilled your promise because you made a promise to somebody who was maybe waiting for you to do that. Because spiritually, and I know that you're a very spiritual person, mm -hmm. you would understand though that at times there are certain things that let a person go. And that would have True. been that final act to say, if it happens before I'm disturbing my son, you won't be able to focus or play, but let me just hold on and see if he'll bring that that he promised. And you did that. You, you would have felt proud at least in, in the midst of the, the sadness and the disappointment and losing a, a parent, you would have also felt very proud of delivering on your promise. No, I did. I, um, I felt proud of, of, of many things, yeah. you know, and I, I can safely raise my hand and say that I, I did everything for my mom, you know, everything that she wanted. I, 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 I honored that, you know, um, I bought her house, everything, yeah. you know, I, and I think buying her house was, was the highlight of, of, of my life, you know. Um, because they they did not own a house, we we were staying at um, my grandparents' house in a big family house, yeah, you know. Brick. Not not yeah, first brick, <laughs> but <laughs> a decent. It was a decent house. It was yeah. fun, but you know, people have have desires. Yeah, Everyone sure. wants their own space, yeah. you know. And and I I I gave her that, and another thing that that you know, um, makes my heart full mm. was that the child that she supported, she used to watch playing a peer under 12, mm. you know, the child that would not wash dishes and opt to go and play mm. um, football, mm. you know, she eventually saw that dream, that big dream unfolding and having an impact, you know, to millions of people, not only in South Africa, but the entire world. And she witnessed that, you know, when she came to the World Cup. And I know that obviously when, when the launch of Nike happened and it was not just yourself, that is where you knew you were mixing with some of the best in the world. That was also going to be another highlight of yours. Just very quickly, Shaye is a wonderful concept. Mm -hmm. And maybe it might be the venue where we do part two of the other interview that I promised. But You're welcome. <laughs> in Davidton, the Morris pub was no more. You and Yeye were like, hey, that's where we're going to be at. You guys have been in the business now. I think you bought it about two years ago. But how's it been to physically and now see it grow? Are you still a part of it? Do you still want to be a part of it? What have you learned as this Shaba stroke businessman events coordinator because it, it comes in many different facets i think the the beauty with me is that i've i've i've, I've been in business yeah. uh you know for 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 a while now i've i've always diversified you know i know the challenges mm -hmm. i know that business is not easy business is painful you know, but you, you, you need to keep pushing until you get things right. And once you get them right, you don't relax. You know, you, you keep pushing. Mm -hmm. So with, with Shaye, it was, um, Yeye came to me and told me that uh, the guy who runs a pub, he's selling the property. So let's look into it. Right. So, and then I was like, okay, let's go and view the property. And then if you're happy, then we'll, We'll buy the property. So we went, we viewed the property, we bought the property. After buying the property, so now we were, um, you know, um, brainstorming and, and starting to create this uh, brand called Shai. 
and then we decided you know what this this building this house is old mm. um it, it does not represent us mm. and it's not in good condition you know let's let's um let's form an, an establishment that will you know will appeal to people mm. you know that will people when they're there they, have, they feel welcome you know it's clean mm. um it, it's in a good environment and then we demolished the whole structure right. and then we, we started from from scratch so that was five years ago yeah and then we started trading um last year mm. you know and uh it's been it's been a great um experience mm. as well especially you know when you're you you are you are your own boss you know it's 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 good that you need to be hands on you need to be there you need to know what's happening and it's also challenging because it's time consuming you know any any business that you run it's it's difficult to run it when you're not there physically so we've we've had those um challenges as well but uh you know it's an industry that we we're not familiar with but we we are growing you know we'll, we'll eventually get there Owami says that it's very lonely wait 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 <laughs> so when are we away zindaba Ish. or away zethu or away zabantu <laughs> Or oh, yes, or oh, yes, or oh, yes, oh, whatever. <laughs> when is that happening? Because Ish. I know you're a family man. Ish. You know, I want to a as they say, I'm lazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of fun. Yeah. No, but but you can't. But you can't. But you can't. I'm a choreograph movie. I'm sure now we, 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 we do things the modern way. But so we, we plan, yeah, one, yeah. we plan now, but short yeah, term, yeah. mid term, long term, yeah, one, but eventually it's over, right? But you don't want to play with always Z2, with the walking stick, mm. then that's a problem. I need to tell you, you must work hard now and, and, and have an income. Yeah. But I know, tell you now, how many months now? Ten months. Yeah, ten days. Since May, I got a little ball. Little table tennis. I don't yeah, know. So, what did you make up then? Shy family planning. What's your final wish for yourself, though? Well, coming back to serious issues. Finally, what is your final wish for somebody who we all respect? Doesn't matter what team you play for, we all respect who you are. You're actually a walking brand, and you know this there would be that one thing that you would want or desire for yourself that you would want to see yourself happily engaged in that will be a reflection of who shaba ultimately is i always say that um my greatest legacy will be the lives i've touched when i make a difference in someone else's life you know my heart is full. I, I sleep a happy person, you know. And I've 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 got a foundation, the CPA Shabalala Foundation. Um, our main focus is sport and, and education, and we you know we encourage mostly kids from, you know, the disadvantaged areas, mm. you know, to dream, and not be defined by you know their background, and also help improve their self-esteem. You know, and and change that narrative that if your 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 skin is dark, you you you're not beautiful. You know, be proud of your skin. You know, be comfortable in your own skin. Right. And I'll be happy if I can see more showers. You know, uh, making it, and not only uh, in the PSL but um, in the entire world. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of opportunities. And I've been trying to, you know, pave that way, create many opportunities and close that gap between African and, and Europe yeah. as well. And one of my, my um, you know, uh, 
biggest project that I want to do as part of the the ten year um, World Cup celebration is is to select youngsters from my tournament and raise funds, take them abroad for a tour with the hope that a few will stay that side and and play that side yeah. at an early age. That's an opportunity that I did not get when I was young. So why not help others, you know, live their dream at age 13 or 15? It's, it's possible, yeah, no, you know, sure. and God has been great, yeah. you know, my ancestors have been great. Always. And the love that, you know, I, I receive is, has been outstanding from the fans. Every day they ask me, every day, I can show you my phone now, you know, Gandhi, we are need. Yeah. Some would, would, would plead with me and say, give us one more season. Yeah. You know, we just want to see you back on the field. And I, I will honor that, yeah. you know, I will, I will definitely honor that. I think that will be my way of saying thank you, you know, through this um, gift that God gave me. Very profound, very inspirational, from an inspirational figure that we all love in South Africa, Africa and the world. And our greatest thank you and tribute as well, going to none other than Spiwa Shabalala, man who 10 years ago, right here on South African soil, made all of us extremely happy. I hope you've been happy as well. Thanks for joining us on Thursday Night Live on Marawa TV. All right, thank you so much for being part of the Marawa TV family. Don't forget as well, do subscribe. Hit on the little bell button so that you get your notifications. And also, yeah, thumbs up, like us. Tell us as well in the comment section who you would like to see coming on to the Thursday night live show or who you'd like us to go and track down and have a conversation with so that we give you all the latest information as and when it happens. It's life of a sports person. <laughs>